Henry Lee Lucas was a confessed American serial killer. Lucas was arrested in Texas and, on the basis of his confessions, hundreds of unsolved murders attributed to him were officially classified as cleared. Lucas was convicted of murdering 157 people and condemned to death for a single case with an unidentified victim. A newspaper exposed the improbable logistics of the confessions made by Lucas when they were taken as a whole, and a study by the Attorney General of Texas concluded he had falsely confessed. The death sentence was commuted to life in prison in 1998. Assertions by local law enforcement that in certain cases Lucas had demonstrated knowledge of unsolved crimes that only a perpetrator could have possessed added to the enigma, as did his association with Otis Toole. Early Life He was born on August 23, 1936 in Blacksburg, Virginia. Lucas lost an eye at age 10 after it became infected due to a fight. In December 1949, Lucas's father, Anderson, whose legs had been severed in a railroad accident, died of hypothermia after going home drunk and collapsing outside during a blizzard. Shortly thereafter, while in the sixth grade, Lucas dropped out of school and ran away from home. Drifting around Virginia, Lucas claimed to have committed his first murder in 1951, when he strangled 17-year-old Laura Burnsley, who had refused his sexual advances. As with most of his confessions, he later retracted this claim. On June 10, 1954, Lucas was convicted on over a dozen counts of burglary in and around Richmond, Virginia, and was sentenced to four years in prison. He escaped in 1957, was recaptured three days later, and was subsequently released on September 2, 1959. In late 1959, Lucas traveled to Tecumseh, Michigan to live with his half-sister, Opal. Around that time, Lucas was engaged to marry a pen pal with whom he had corresponded while incarcerated. When his mother visited him for Christmas, she disapproved of her son's fiancé and insisted he move back to Blacksburg. He refused after which they argued repeatedly during the visit about his upcoming nuptials. Matricide On January 11, 1960, in Tecumseh, Michigan, Lucas killed his mother during an argument regarding whether or not he should return home to her house to care for her as she grew older. He claimed she struck him over the head with a broom, at which point he stabbed her in the neck. Lucas then fled the scene. He subsequently said, All I remember was slapping her alongside the neck, but after I did that I saw her fall and decided to grab her, but she fell to the floor and when I went back to pick her up, I realized she was dead. Then I noticed that I had my knife in my hand and she had been cut. She was not in fact dead. And when Lucas's half-sister Opal, with whom he was staying, returned later, she discovered their mother alive in a pool of blood. She called an ambulance, but it turned out to be too late to save Viola Lucas's life. The official police report stated she died of a heart attack precipitated by the assault. Lucas returned to Virginia, then says he decided to drive back to Michigan, but was arrested in Ohio on the outstanding Michigan warrant. Lucas claimed to have killed his mother in self-defense but his claim was rejected, and he was sentenced to between 20 and 40 years imprisonment in Michigan for second-degree murder. After serving 10 years in prison, he was released in June 1970 due to prison overcrowding. Drifter In 1971, Lucas was convicted of attempting to kidnap three schoolgirls while serving a five-year sentence. He established a relationship with a family friend and single mother who had written to him. They married on his release in 1975, but he left two years later after his stepdaughter accused him of sexually abusing her. Lucas began moving between various relatives and one got him a job in West Virginia, where he established a relationship that ended when his girlfriend's family confronted him about abuse. 
Lucas befriended Otis Toole, and settled in Jacksonville, Florida where he lived with Toole's parents and became close to his adolescent niece Frida. Becky Powell, who had a mild intellectual impairment, a period of stability followed, with Lucas working as a roofer, fixing neighbors' cars and scavenging scrap murders. Powell was put in a state shelter by the authorities after her mother and grandmother died in 1982. Lucas convinced her to abscond and they lived on the road, eventually traveling to California, where an employer's wife asked them to work for her infirm mother. 82-year-old Kate Rich, of Ringgold, Texas, Rich's family turned Lucas and Powell out, accusing them of failing to do their jobs and writing checks on her account. While hitchhiking they were picked up by the minister of a Stoneburg, Texas religious commune called the House of Prayer. Believing Lucas and the 15-year-old Powell were a married couple, he found Lucas a job as a roofer while allowing the couple to stay in a small apartment on the commune. Powell had become argumentative and homesick for Florida, and Lucas said she left at a Bowie, Texas truck stop. According to some of his later accounts Lucas murdered Powell and then Rich. Arrest Confession to Murders of Powell and Rich Lucas was a prime suspect in the killing of Rich. A few months later, in June 1983, he was arrested on charges of unlawful possession of a firearm by Texas Ranger Phil Ryan. Lucas reported that he was roughly treated by bullying inmates in prison and attempted suicide. Lucas claimed that police stripped him naked, denied him cigarettes and bedding, held him in a cold cell, and did not allow him to contact an attorney. After four days, Lucas confessed to the murder of Rich, which confession investigators had good reason to believe was genuine. In addition, he confessed to killing Powell. When he started confessing to numerous unsolved cases, he was initially credible. Police knew that he had truthfully admitted committing two killings. Some interrogators, including Ryan, thought many of Lucas's confessions were made to get out of his cell and improve his living conditions. They did, however, treat dozens as potentially genuine false confession spree. In November 1983, Lucas was transferred to a jail in Williamson County, Texas. In interviews with Texas Rangers and other law enforcement personnel, Lucas continued to confess to numerous additional unsolved killings. It was thought that there was positive corroboration with Lucas's confessions in 28 unsolved murders, and so the Lucas task force was established. Later attempts at discovering whether Lucas had actually killed anyone apart from Powell and Rich were complicated by Lucas's ability to make an accurate deduction that seemed to substantiate a confession. In one instance, he explained how he had correctly identified a victim in a group photograph through her wearing spectacles. A pair of glasses were on a table in a crime scene photo shown to him earlier. There were also suggestions that the interview tapes showed that, despite Lucas's supposedly low IQ, he had adroitly read the reactions of those interviewing him and altered what he was saying, thereby making his confessions more consistent with facts known to law enforcement. The most serious allegation against investigators, that they had let Lucas read case files on unsolved crimes and thus enabled him to come up with convincingly detailed confessions, made it virtually impossible to determine if, as some continue to suspect, he had been telling the truth to the Lucas task force about a relatively large number of the murders. In 1984, Lucas confessed to the murder of a previously unidentified girl, Tammy Alexander, known as the Caledonia Jane Doe until early 2015, discovered in 1979. Investigators found insufficient evidence to support the confession. Lucas also was believed to have falsely confessed to the 1980 slaying of Carol Cole in Louisiana. Cole was unidentified until 2015. Discredited
Journalist Hugh Wainsworth and others investigated four articles that appeared in the Dallas Times. Herald. They calculated that Lucas would have had to use his 13-year-old Ford station wagon to cover 11. 000 miles in one month to have committed the crimes police attributed to him. Commutation of death sentence Lucas remained convicted of 11 homicides. He had been sentenced to death for one. An unidentified woman dubbed as Orange Socks, whose body was found in Williamson County, Texas, on Halloween 1979. Even though the court heard that on that date a timesheet had recorded his presence at work in Jacksonville, Florida. Death On March 12, 2001, at 11 p.m. Lucas was found dead in prison from heart failure at age 64. He is buried at Captain Joe Bird Cemetery in Huntsville, Texas. Lucas's grave is currently unmarked due to incidents of vandalism or theft differing opinions. Lucas's credibility was damaged by his lack of precision. He initially admitted to having killed 60 people, a number he raised to over 100 and then to 3. Oh, oh, oh. He remained, however, publicized as America's most prolific murderer. Despite denials such as flatly stating, I am not a serial killer, in a letter to author Shalady, Unresolved Suspicions A reconstruction of the Walker County Jane Doe, who was murdered in 1980. She was possibly killed by Lucas. One Texas Ranger said that although it was obvious to him that Lucas often lied, there was an instance where he demonstrated guilty knowledge. I remember him trying to cop to one he didn't do, but there was another murder case where I rail kiss your butt if he didn't. T lead us right to the deer stand where the murder took place. Ain't no way he could have guessed that. And I damn sure didn't tell him. I think he did that one. Quote. Unidentified victims. Lucas could possibly be involved in the murders of two young unidentified people found in Sumter County, South Carolina in 1976. Lucas stated that he had been in South Carolina on the day of the crime. Media There have been several books on the case. Three narrative films have been made based on Lucas's confessions. 1985's Confessions of a Serial Killer 1986's Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer Played by Michael Rooker And the 2009 film Drifter Henry Lee Lucas Two documentary films have been released, 1995's The Serial Killers and the 1995 television documentary Henry Lee Lucas, The Confession Killer. An A&E biography episode about Lucas aired in 2005 that featured future horror film director Dylan Greenberg as young Lucas in reenactments. At the age of eight, 